guys, this video is for our kindergarten and first grade team for June week three. This week our story is all about Gideon from the book of Judges and our bottom line is God can use you no matter what. So I heard that last week we accidentally watched the Gideon story, but this week we're gonna watch it again just because it really ties in with all of our small group activities. So um, our life app for this whole month is learning to see confidence, sorry, learning to see yourself the way that God sees you and our memory verse. I remain confident. Oh, ours is not that one. Ours is the NIRV one, which is a little bit different, which is, oh, it's not in here. It's on their memory verse cards. Oh, that's sad. I don't have it. Okay, we'll practice it in large group tomorrow. So this week, our story is in Judges 6, 8, and we discover more about when God called Gideon to lead the Israelites. Gideon doubted that God would want to help him. After all, he was from the smallest tribe, the smallest family, and he was the smallest in his family. But God wanted him anyway. So eventually Gideon learned that God could use him no matter what. And our bottom line is God can use you no matter what. Big or small, young or old, God can use people to do extraordinary things. And we pray that whether kids feel like Gideon or have the confidence of an entertainer talking on stage, that they realize God can use them also. So jumping into our leader guide for this week. Welcome kids as they come in. Be sure to just pray for them throughout the morning. We just never ever know what these kids are going through and especially over these past you know year and a half or so, it's just been crazy. So be praying for the kiddos that we are serving. And then maybe ask your kids this morning to share a secret or hidden talent that they might have. And you could kind of ask them to share with the group or share out loud. They don't need to write it down um, for our younger kids. Then when service starts at nine and 11, you're gonna do an opening activity called Commander Says, which is like Simon Says but with motions that a soldier might do. So march in place, stand at attention, run in place, jumping jacks, climb a wall, belly crawl. And then you can invite your volunteers to be the commander also. And then to close it down, you're just gonna say, guys, today in large group, we're gonna hear about someone unexpected who used, who God used to command an army. So let's go find out more. So then you'll head down to large group to hear the story of Gideon again, if you were here last week. Um, when you get back, I think that it would be super great to kind of reread the story of Gideon from this action Bible. And I'm going to kind of quickly do that because I think it will help you prepare for when you are serving. So it says, in the years of plenty that followed Deborah's victory over the Canaanites, the Israelites again forget God. One by one, they joined their neighbors in worshiping the idol Baal. At last, only a few people in all of Israel remember that it was God who had rescued them from their enemies. Every harvest season, just when the Israelites are ready to gather their food for the year, roving bands of Midianites steal their harvest. For years, the desert tribesmen terrorize the Israelite villages and raid their fields. So every year, these bad guys come, take all the grain that the Israelites have collected, okay? Um, so it says, but when the raid is over, they learn that their grain is gone. For seven long years, the Israelites suffer at the hands of the desert tribesmen. They hide out in caves and thresh their grain in secret places. But the raiders always return. Then even more frightening news comes. The Midianites are coming again, and they're bringing great armies from the east. Like grasshoppers, the enemy swarms over the Israelite fields, stealing grain, cattle, and sheep. But one day, a young Israelite is secretly threshing his grain when a stranger appears before him. Who are you and what do you want? This is Gideon. You are a mighty warrior, Gideon. God has chosen you to save his people. Me, my family is the weakest of the whole tribe and I'm the weakest one in my family. If you're really an angel of the Lord, give me a sign. Gideon prepares some food and brings it to the stranger. And the stranger says, put the food on the rock. The stranger touches the food with his staff and instantly a fire bursts forth and consumes it. So then Gideon knows he's seen an angel of the Lord. When the angel disappears, God speaks to Gideon and tells him to destroy the altar of Baal. So the altar of the bad guys, the false gods. But Gideon is afraid of the townspeople, so he waits until dark to obey. But Gideon still hopes that God hasn't really called him. He's not confident, right? So he asks for a sign. He asks that the next morning the, that he puts his wool out on the ground and that the wool is wet with dew, but everything around it is dry. And the next morning, sure enough, that's what happens. The wool is soaking wet, the ground is dry. He's still afraid, right? He's still not confident. So he says, please don't be angry, but give me one more sign. Now make the wool dry and the ground wet. And of course, the next morning, 
that's what happens. And he says now he knows that he is being called to save his people. So he gathers the people of Israel together and said, with God's help, we can drive the Midianites from our, from our land. Are you with me? He has an army of 32,000 soldiers, and they marched to the Midianite camps, and they said, well, with 32,000 men, we can win. But God gives Gideon more instructions. He tells Gideon to say that if any of them are afraid, they can leave and go home. So most of his army leaves. Only 10,000 men remain. But then God wants it to be clear that victory comes from him, not the strength of Gideon's army. So he makes Gideon weed out the army again. When men stoop to drink from the brook, anyone who kneels down to drink is sent home. So now he's left with only 300 men of his original 32,000. And now he knows that it's only with God's help that he can beat this enemy. So what he tells them to do is hide their torches and pitchers in clay jars, spread out on three sides of the camp and wait until nightfall and then listen for his signal on the trumpet. When Gideon blows the trumpet, the men blow their trumpets. They smash their clay jars, their water pitchers. They wave their torches and they give their battle cry, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And the stillness of the night is suddenly broken by these trumpets and the crash of these pitchers. The Midianites are startled from their sleep and they rush out to find their camp on fire. And even though there's only 300, the Israelites' torches and horns and shouting throw the Midianites into a panic and they start attacking each other. And in a minute, they've killed more of their own men than Gideon ever could. And the Lord has demonstrated that Gideon can be confident because of him, right? And that comes back to God can use you no matter what. So after you review that story with your kids, you're going to show them these random materials. Some wheat, fleece, water, a trumpet, flashlight, some clay, army men, a canteen, excuse me, and a sleeping mask. And you're going to have your kids, after you read that story with them out of this adventure Bible, tell you how are these things related to the story and help them retell the story. Well, Gideon was, they were saving wheat and the Midianites kept coming and taking their wheat. So Gideon asked him to make his fleece wet and the ground dry with the water. And that was God's sign. And so then they went to the camp and God took his army and he made it into a super duper small army so that they know they had to trust God. And what did they do? They went and they camped out in front of the Midianite army. And when it, they were all sleeping at nighttime, Gideon shouted using his horn and they blew their horn and they set everything on fire with all this light and they smashed their clay jars, their jars that were made of clay. <laughs> this is just not only clay. And you can retell the story using all of those items. Just a super fun way to do that, asking the kids how do those things come together. It just helps it make, make it more concrete in their heads. Okay, then you have a little activity that you can do called God, um, sorry, no matter what. And this is kind of like a game of mother may I. So the kids will line up at one end of your environment. And you're going to call a kid's name and read a scenario from this page that is in the front of your folder. So like... It says, even though you're scared, you follow your coach's instructions and try a new move. And after each scenario, encourage kids to say the bottom line, which is God can use you no matter what. And then as after they do, guide them to move forward with a soldier style move, like march three steps, do two jumping jacks, climb a wall four steps. Um, and then the game ends when every kid reaches you. And so you'll just close it down by saying, so Gideon wasn't sure he was the right guy for the job. He felt small and unimportant. But God used Gideon and his small army to do great things. And God can use you to do great things too. He can use you to be kind to someone who needs to know that God loves them. He can use you to be a friend to someone who needs a friend. And he can use you to share someone with someone who needs help. God can use you no matter what. And then maybe make it personal. Tell kids about a time when God used you to do something for him, even though you weren't confident. Then for the memory verse activity, we've got these little um, rubber balls here. You're going to have to maybe set it up beforehand for kids that we are not going to bounce these. We're not going to throw them because they are bouncy balls. And what you're going to do is you're going to read the memory verse, practice it with the motions, um, so this is, I believe, an NIRV Bible. So let's see in here, 2713. Here is something I am still sure of. I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm still alive. Okay? 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to emphasize, um, I'm sorry, you're going to unpack the truth that we can be confident in God's goodness. We can be confident that God is good and emphasize that Gideon saw God's goodness when God helped him to defeat the Midianite army and God will be good to us too. Then you're going to split your kids into two teams, line each team up at the end of your environment, and you're going to stand up these tents. So I put them this way, but they all they have the memory verse phrases on them. And then you're going to give your team a marble or a couple of bouncy balls. And when a team successfully knocks down all the tents, you're going to help them put them in order. So what they're going to do is they're going to stand back here and they're going to roll and I didn't have that up. You're going to knock down the tents with the balls. So maybe just give your team a couple of balls. That way you don't have bouncy balls all over your room. And you'll just close this down by saying, Gideon wasn't confident that his army of just 300 men could defeat the Midianites. In fact, he was afraid. So God told Gideon to go down to the Midianite camp and listen to what they were saying. Do you remember what he heard? Yes, one soldier said that he'd had a dream that a loaf of bread rolled into camp and knocked over a tent. Another soldier said it could only be Gideon and God had given him the camp. So even though Gideon was scared and his army was small, God helped him do big things. And God can use you to do big things too. And then just closing down in prayer. Um, just thanking God that he can use us no matter what. Guys, just thank you so much for serving. These truths are so important. I'm just so grateful my own kids are hearing these on Sunday mornings and being led by you all. I'm so grateful for that and just grateful that you all are leading um, these dozens and dozens of other kids to learn these same wonderful truths that God can use them no matter what. So thank you guys for serving and we'll see you on Sunday.